take a look now for a few minutes at the Das Tavunos. We started learning yesterday about the Gilui Hayichud on page Yud, Yud Aleph. We learned from Friedlander's note. And again, the, the Sefer started with uh, Neshama saying to the Seichel, I believe in Yud Gimel Animamins. <clears throat> there are nine that I understand and four that I don't understand. I need to understand them. It says, You need Vyadata, you need to understand this. You need to have a thinking cap on. You can't just believe it. This is the Shita of Ramchal, Shalah, Chayvis Halvav, as many, many Rishonim. According to one uh, Shita, the Rambam holds like that. Whatever the case is, the Ramchal Sefer here is built on understanding what you're talking about. So that's why I mentioned several times. Ramchal is going to talk about how God runs the world, why he runs the world that way, to the extent the human being can understand it. When a person has a question, sometimes we say to the person, Gam it's all for the good. We say, Kol Rahman Latab, everything that God does is for the good. When we say that to a person, which is fine, you can say that to a person, but you need to understand you're addressing his emuna. You're not explaining to him why something happened. You're just saying to him, trust in God, it's for the good. So, Kol Madovid Rahman Latab, or Gamzu Latayv, is something that triggers my emuna. This Sefer is about understanding your emuna. So when someone says, why did this happen? It doesn't mean you can explain to him why it happened. The Ramchal will make that pretty clear at the end of the Sefer, that the Ikvasa, the Mashiach, in the days that we live in now, nobody really knows why anything's happening, except God's bringing Mashiach, and these events will bring Mashiach. So it'd be, for us today, it's a different subject. For us today, it's Tzadik Bemunasa Yichya. However, the Sefer is based upon the concept of Yodata Hayom. You need to understand what you're talking about. If you say Gam Zulatayv, can you now explain to me not why this specific thing is Latayv, but explain to me, generally speaking, why do bad things happen to good people, so to speak? And that's the rush of a Tovlo question, which Moshe Rabbeinu didn't get an answer for. But we cannot explain that in terms of the human being, the particular human being. We learned about that in the Sefer. Ramchal says what we can understand is why in the system where God created a perfectly imperfect world, why in that system is it necessary for lack of shleimus, his sorrow. Why is it necessary for pain to exist in the system, yusurim in the system? That's something we can talk about. Why the system needs that built into it so that the whole system works. For our benefit. There has to be these things in the system for our benefit. But if the Ramchal says, as Rafid Lander explains, you're going to say to me, why does this tzaddik suffer? And this tzaddik is successful. We want to get down to that kind of nitty gritty. Why did Hashem say this tzaddik suffers and this tzaddik um, will be successful? That no one will ever understand. That's God's cheshman about how to run the world. We're not talking about particularization. I want to know why he's suffering and he's not. We don't know. We're never going to understand because we can't conceive of such a wide understanding of I don't even know what the number is. Billions, trillions, zillions of puzzle pieces fitting together. Every blade of grass, every flower, every tree, every animal, every human being, every human being's eyeball, every human being's uh, ear, every human being's finger. We're talking about all of this interacting in the most incredible way and interacting every millisecond. So why this happens to this particular person at a particular time the particularization is God's cheshman about how he's running this massive universe. But there is the general question, without getting into particulars, 
why is in the system, um, perfectly imperfect system, this idea of suffering, pain, yisurim. And that we can try to understand, rather than saying, which you can say, it's perfectly legitimate, chazal, rather than saying, gam zulatayv, I can ask, okay, it's gam zulatayv, I accept that as emuna. But can you now explain to me why in this system of the world, I should have to say Gam Zulatayv? Why is there something in the world called suffering and pain, generally speaking? And that's what this cipher is going to be focused on. So the cipher began with the Neshama telling the Seichel, I believe in the 39 Imamins. I can explain nine of them, four I absolutely believe in, and I can't, but I can't explain them. And that's Hashgacha, um, Kadosh Baruch who's supervising, managing the world every millisecond. Schav Onesh, Bias Mashiach and Tchias HaMesim. And we mentioned the problem that the Neshama explains he has is because when I look out the window, it doesn't look like the world is running in any such fashion. Has Vasholem, the optical illusion called chaos. We look outside and we see, oh, the world's a Hefkeville. It's a Hefkeville. It's chaos. Nobody's running this thing. To think that way, and if it looks that way, it's an optical illusion. Again, take a look at Google and put in the words optical illusion. I, I mentioned this many times years ago. There was this dress, and there was a, a fight all around the world. Is it a blue dress? Is it a gray dress? It was the same picture. Millions of people looked at this picture. Some people said it's blue. Some people said it's gray. Okay. Things can look different to different people, and there are also optical illusions. It looks like a square, but it's a circle. It looks like this. It's not like this. There are physical optical illusions. There are spiritual optical illusions. There's no chaos out there. It's an assoyan for us to look at it and say, this is not chaos. God is actually running a perfectly imperfect ship so that I have the ability, the opportunity to make choices. And through those choices, I perfect myself, I perfect the world, I become a partner with God in creation, and I become a sholem. And that itself is my schar that I became a sholem. But because I became a sholem, I get this entry card to go into the olam haba, which is the kibbutz ha-shleimim. It's, the, it's, the, it's where the congregation gets together. All the shleimim that became shleimim in olam haza, they get together in a place called Olam Hab. It's the Kibbutz HaShleim. That's the words of the Derech Hashem, the Ramchal Derech Hashem. Kibbutz HaShleim. And Rosh Hashanah made a place where all these Shleimim can enjoy L'Neitzach Netzachim to be Nena Mizif HaShem. So the first place the Ramchal started was the purpose of creation was Hatova. God wants to bestow goodness on the world. But then we came now that the purpose of the Briyam page Yud is Gilui Hayichud. We said we would deal with that. We're not going to deal with it today. For now, we're saying that the purpose of creation is to reveal God's uniqueness and the system created to make that um, goal work is called Hatava. Okay. So there's the system. Inside the system, the ultimate goal is to be native. And the goal of being native was the ultimate purpose of creation, which is Gili Ha'ichud. And that's where we'll leave it for now. Right now, we're going to talk about the Gili Ha'ichud, we read my Friedlander's footnote yesterday on page in Aleph. The difference between Yichud and all the other Midas of Hashem is because Yichud we can talk about, but we're not allowed to talk about the other quote-unquote Midas of Hashem because we don't know what we're talking about. If you want to talk in a positive way about God's Chachma, what is his Chachma? You can't describe it. And if you try to describe it, you become a Kaifer. You can't describe God's Chachma. And besides, you wouldn't understand God's Chachma because as we explained yesterday, all of our human Chachma is externally, uh, comes external, reading a book, going to a shir, experiencing something in life and internalizing the book, the shir and the experiences and your brain puts it all together and you now understand something. The Rav Shalom is not getting better at the job, Chas Shalom. As time goes on, he's not learning more and becoming a better world administrator. Everything is internal. He knew everything that was, is, and will be internally without ever, he knows what's going to happen tomorrow, and it didn't happen yet, but he knows it already, not because he's a prophet, but because that knowledge is internal. It is him. He is knowledge. 
as the Rambam puts it, a human being has a, is a human being, and then there's something called the knowledge of the human being. We don't have God who has knowledge. God is knowledge. We don't even, and the Rambam says we don't have even the proper vocabulary to explain this, let alone the mind to explain it, but that's the fact. We cannot understand God's Chachmah. To try to describe it would be denigrating to God, Fas Shalom. So we don't talk about the positive aspect. I want to tell you how smart God is. I want to tell you how powerful he is. We talked about HaKel HaGod Lagib Banorah that we're not allowed to say, except the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu said it in the Torah, wherefore we got permission to say those words. The thing that we can always talk about and that we're mechuyiv to talk about, Ramchal says, and we're mechuyiv to understand is the Yichud, God's uniqueness. And this is the umbrella concept. How wise is God? He's unbelievably wise. Well, how wise is he? It's so unique, we cannot describe it. That's the Yichud of God's Chachma. God's a Gibor. How powerful is he? He's very powerful. He's this, he's that, a million nuclear bombs, he's this, he, whatever you want to say, you can't get to that, you cannot describe it. So I say God is a gibar. How much is he a gibar? It's so unique, we know nothing about it, we can't explain it. That's the yichud of gibar. So the uniqueness, the yichud is something we need to learn about and something that we can delve into. But we can't delve into the particular concept, chachma, chesed, gevura, how much chesed does he do? There's an amazing amount of chesed. Well, explain it to me. Yichud. So this is the area that we can discuss. And this, the Ramchal teaches us, is the taklis of the Bria. And when the yichud is nesgala, when the yichud is revealed sufficiently enough in God's determination that man understands the yichud, that's when Mashiach will come. The Gili HaYichud brings Mashiach. The Lineder tomorrow, we're going to take a, few, take, take a look at a few lines in the Ramchal for today on this subject. Lineder tomorrow will be Lagba Omer. We're going to take a look at <clears throat> the Ramchal. The Ramchal wrote a Maimer HaGeula, the Maimer of bringing the Geula. And there he explains um, something called Zechira and Pekida. And this brings, will bring us to the subject of Rabbi Akiva. Of course, everybody talks about Rabbi Shimon Bayechoi and Lag Boimer, and that's fine. But the story begins with the 24,000 Talmidim of Rabbi Akiva who died during Sphira. And Rabbi Akiva had to find new students to start the Mesora of Torah, the transmission of Torah. He needed new students. And one of the five students that Rabbi Akiva taught was Rabbi Shem Bayechoi, and Rabbi Shem Bayechoi's Yorzai is Lagba Omer. So Rabbi Akiva's Talmidim died until Lagba Omer. Rabbi Akiva then taught five new students, including Rabbi Shem Bayechoi, who then Rabbi Shem Bayechoi is Nifter on Lagba Omer. So there's a tremendous amount of focus, obviously, on Rabbi Shem Bayechoi for Lagba Omer, not as much focus on Rabbi Akiva. <clears throat> until we sing Amar Rabbi Akiva on Lagba Omer, then we remember, oh, Amar Rabbi Akiva, Amar Rabbi Akiva, oh, Rabbi Akiva is really the, the beginning of the story because it's through him that Rabbi Shimba Yechoi gets Samicha. And there are people that rather than going, or they go to both, today, this year, no one's going anywhere. You sh- that's, that's the whole Ra'ah, and that's what we have to listen to. <clears throat> There were people, when you can, they would not only go to Meiron on Lagba Omer, Rabbi Shem Bayechoi, they would go to Tveria on Lagba Omer, to the kever of Rabbi Akiva. Lagba Omer, you go to the kever of Rabbi Akiva. That's where the story starts. And of course, next to Rabbi Akiva is buried the Ramchal. And maybe Belineda will discuss that tomorrow, why the Ramchal is buried next to Rabbi Akiva. What did, why, how did that happen? The Ramchal died in Akko in a plague. Why did they take him to Severia to be buried next to Rabbi Akiva? <clears throat> what is there in common between these two? That the Gedolim of that time said Ramchal needs to be next to Rabbi Akiva. We'll get a little understanding of Rabbi Akiva, the Ramchal, and a bit of Rabbi Shimba Yechoi. So we'll take a look at that Glinede tomorrow, and a lot of it has to do with Gilui Hayichud 
and bringing Mashiach. So let's take a look just at a few lines. Yud Aleph. Aval Yehuda Adaraba Zem Meskar U Mesbar Lanu Biru Gomor Benimshach Lanu Mizesh Lodai Shehu Mesbar Lanu El Shachayov Manachnu Lachash Olibeno Hadia Hazos Litkoa Osa Bilavavenu Beish of Gomor Belish Shum Pikpoklal. While we can't understand God's particular attributes, quote unquote, His Chachma His Gavura, we can't delve into it. We don't know what they're talking about. Yichud, however, that umbrella concept. The uniqueness of Yi Chachma, the uniqueness of Chesed, the uniqueness of Guru, that not only can we delve into, we are Mokuyev to delve into. Litkoa Osa Bilvaveinu. We have to put it firmly into our hearts. Belishum Pikpokla, without any questions whatsoever. And this is the commandment we got from Moshe Rabbeinu from Hashem. This is the Pasuk we keep on quoting. Ain't od. Ain od doesn't just mean there's no second God. And you should know that the God of heaven, the God of earth is God and there's Ain od. There's no second God. It goes much deeper than that. Ain od means there's no one that can compare to him. He is so unique, you can't talk about him and you can't compare him to anything. Ain od, there's nothing like him. Not that there's not a second one. There's nothing like him. And if there's nothing like him, I can't compare him to anything. I can't talk about it because I only as a human being understand things. And then I can say that this is like this or this is like that. But when I'm talking about God, I can't say God is like because I can't compare him to anything. That's part of the concept of Ein Od. Upil Elyon Meid Ba'atzmo Madia Kikola Nilkat Mikoma Sibosev Hagdolos Ashehu Mishapech Bolomo Halahu Gilui Yehudai Hagoma Hazeh. Tomorrow, Bli Neda will read the Psukim. And the Psukim he's going to quote, Ramchal says, and it is clear from so many Psukim, Kikola Nilkat Mikoma Sibosev Hagdolos, everything. That we're supposed to learn from Mesibosa. Mesibosa comes from the word Sibos, from all the things that happen in the world. And he's playing on a posik in Eov, Rafid Leda says. It says, Mesibos, footnote not 15, Mesibos, Mishapech, Betach, Bulosa, Lopolo. It's almost like a, con- a concept of chaos. Mesibos, Mishapech. Mishapech means upside down, reverse. Everything seems to be in reverse. Mesibos mishapech. Everything, all the reasons that are happening in the world seem to be reversed. A is leading to B and really A should lead to C. B is leading to X and B really should lead to C. And it, le- it looks like the cause and effect chain of events is not working properly. Mesibos mishapech. Mishapech. Everything's topsy-turvy. Chas v'shol. And the Ramchal now says, Upi Elyon Meid Ba'atzmo, that sentence. The Rabboni Shlolem himself testifies in numerous psukim, and he tells us, Ki kol ha-nilkot mi kol mesibosef ha-gdolos asher hu mishapech bolomo. All the events that we look at in the world that look like the topsy-turvy, mishapech ba'olomo, looks like the world's topsy-turvy, looks like it's chaos. What is the purpose of what we think is chaos? It's for a person to say this is an optical illusion and actually the unique one God is running this place and he's running it as a perfectly imperfect system because that's the system that he created so that we can become partners with him. There is no chaos there. This is all an optical illusion. The Gilui Hayichud is there as the most important concept in Jewish life. The Gilui Hayichud means that as an individual goes through life, or as a community goes through life, as a country goes through life, as the planet goes through life, as a universe goes through life, and it seems that there are chaotic events that don't make sense, and it's topsy-turvy, it's Moshe Kapoya. I would have expected this to happen, and this happened. What does God want here? The answer is God wants people to talk about Gilu Hayichud. He wants people to come to learn and come and say, 
I see beyond the optical illusion. There is no chaos here. I'm beginning to understand the perfectly imperfect world that God created for my benefit so that I can become a partner with him in creation and get schar and move on to Olam Haba with the card of a shalim. So we're going to read that sentence again. God himself testifies, and he teaches us, all the events that God is causing to happen in the world that look like it's topsy-turvy, it's Moshe Kapoya, it's chaos, chas v'sholem, take it easy, stay calm. It's all being run by God for the perfectly imperfect world for your benefit. And Nebuch, of course, there are people that are suffering. Nebuch, there are people that died. And that's a separate subject. But what we need to understand is there is no chaos out there. The Gilui Hayichud is the answer to when we think chaos. And the more people will stop talking about chaos, and the more people will stop talking about the world is a Hefkevel. And they will say, it looks like a Hefkevel. Not a Hefkevel. There's a Gili HaYichud. God's unique, the uniqueness of God's existence is being revealed here. And how it's being revealed, he'll explain in the next few pages. But that's the amazing concept. We're not in a chaotic world. We're not in a chaotic life. The Gili HaYichud, if we can reveal to ourselves and our friends and our community, and to the world, that there's a yichud here, that the Rebbe Shalom is actually running events in a perfect world, the perfectly imperfect world, for our benefit, Mashiach comes. And that's what the Ramchal is going to say in a few pages. He's going to go through Odom Harisho and how all this started. He uses the words, Ukshen Zbarer, Nizbarer, Ukshen Nizgalen, Nizgalen. We're not in here to suffer. God hasn't thrown us into all these years since other Mauritian just to watch us suffer. He's waiting for this to become clear to the human mind. Other Mauritian didn't get it. He'll explain that later in the safe. He didn't get it. He could have gotten it and avoided what we have now of 5,780 years of history. It could have been avoided in one second with the Nahash. He had an opportunity to be Megala Yichud Haboyre. He didn't. And now for 5,780 years, we're trying to do the work to reverse what other Mauritian did. But once human beings, once mankind learns the lesson and it's clear, that's it. Once it's clear, it's clear. This world, as we know, it comes to an end. We go on to a better world. We don't have to sit around here and continue to quote unquote suffer. We don't suffer here for just any reason. We're going through these things to see beyond the suffering, beyond the chaos, and say, this is Yichud. And when it becomes clear to us and clear to enough of mankind as determined by God, and is bar and is bar, it's over. You learned your lesson. I don't have to keep you in the room to keep on punishing you. There's no point that you've learned the lesson already. And once it's revealed, Chen is Galen is If it's revealed, it's revealed. And if you learned your lesson, you learned your lesson. And this is why I felt that when the corona started, that this would be a very important safer to learn because people were talking about a chaotic world, what's going on, the world's crazy, and when are we going to go back to normal? All these kind of shyness. We're not going back to normal. It wasn't normal before. We're looking forward to a new world that will really be normal. The world before wasn't normal in any sense. And to get to that new beautiful world of a new normal, we have to talk about Gile Yichu. So we have a group of people learning every day about Gile, learning Ramchal, Das Tavunas. We're learning about the Sinyan, and we're going to be learning about Gilea Yichud for a little while. It's uh, the core, almost, concept of all the Ramchal's forum, the Gile Yichud. It's a core concept. And he will work it through for us. And as we talk about it, and we delve into it, and we study it, and we talk about it to our friends, our neighbors, and our family, there'll be more and more Gile Yichud. And we will become... We will become the people who can be at the forefront of bringing Mashiach but through talking and explaining Gili Hayichud Bimheira Bimeinu. So all the everybody should have a wonderful day. Yidin, there still Yidin. 
that need obviously refuas, they should have refuas. You that need the Hamish, the Rosh Hashanah should send them the Hama. You that need Yeshuas, the Rosh Hashanah send them Yeshuas. There are wonderful people in the world. They're also a Bayan Shloylam Zbriya. They need Rafuas, Yeshuas, Nechamas, the Rosh Hashanah should send it to our good dimension in the world. And uh, people have been saying that Talmidi Rabbi Akiva stopped dying in Lagba Omer. It's a day where the plague stopped. So, the Bar Shalom, we have an opportunity to mispal to Rabbi Shalom. Akbaim is a very special day. The Zoya Kodesh says that starting with Pesach Sheni, <clears throat> seven days from Pesach Sheni, which includes Lagba Omer, but seven very special days for the reasons that the Zohar explains. And the tefillahs that we offer during these seven days are very special tefillahs. Uh, the skies are open for, for tefillah. So we can pray to Rabbi Shlolom, like Baomer, B'Shem Bayachoi, Rabbi Akiva, these great, great giants who left us with a tremendous, tremendous tradition of what it means to be a Yid. And Blinette tomorrow we'll go into Rabbi Akiva and Gili Hayichud and what Rabbi Akiva meant and why the Ramchal is buried next to him. Everybody have, and again, tomorrow is Tuesday, Meir Hashem. So we begin at nine o'clock for the, with the women's share. Men can join in if they want to. We're in Yeshaya, Perek Yud Aleph, Mashiach's, uh, the Perek about Yecheskel's vision of Mashiach, the Meher Yameinu. From there, we'll move on to the Shear in <coughs> Midos. We're up to the Ezra's Nashim. And from there, we'll take a look at Rabbi Akiva, and the Ramchal and Lagba Omer. Again, everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.